just you have no charisma and you never right. ever speak. I was going to grow out a beard, but now I'm, I'm going to probably shave what I have now because when I look in the mirror, it reminds me how stupid your face is. It just sucks because of you, okay? You make everything worse just by you being around. Oh, shit. We're live. We're live. Guys, hey, uh, hey guys, welcome back to Goats and Gods. Uh, what did I, I, uh, what did I, what, did, what stream did I join? Hey. Who, who are these guys? What's going on? What I am welcome by Logan here from Ibex Universe. The link to his yeah. channel is in the description. Please make sure you subscribe. And we are joined today by Rob. Uh, Rob has a new campaign live called Tales of Novaterra. Rob, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. All this arguing, though, in the back room. I don't know. I hey, don't Rob, really know welcome to the friendliest show ever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> He must have been I mean, something. The, the kid's got a green feet. screen. He's not even using. <laughs> <laughs> we are professional. Logan, how's your week treating you? Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, there's some stuff that I've been not looking forward to uh, tonight, but you know, for the most part, it's been pretty good. I mean, would you care to share with the class, or is this like private stuff? Yeah, it's, it's kind of private stuff. Can you make something up so we can just pretend that we talked about it? It relates, you know, to the show and. You know, uh, I got you. Yeah, some of the people. Rob, how's the week? How's the week treating you? Good. It's been a long week. Um, you know, promoting. You know, promoting is. So you launched on Bancroft stream, right? Yeah, last uh, Wednesday. Uh, how was that? Was that? It's always good. It's I'm always asking good. because, like, there's so much fun just to watch, even though I'm not launching a book. It's just like an electric atmosphere. So I thoroughly enjoy the Bancroft uh, launches. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's always fun to do. Um, Mike's a, Mike's a nice guy, and um, he's always very supportive um, of a lot of creators. So it's always fun to go on there and joke around, and have fun, and launch a book. It's it's always high energy, you know, a lot of fun to do a book. So, um, but it's 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 a marathon, not a sprint. So you do a lot of you do a lot of streams. I have a lot of streams scheduled. So trying to get sleep no. and stuff like that we were talking before the show you and i don't really know each other all that well even though we've both been around the scene would you mind giving like just some kind of like origin story like what's your background what got you into yeah what kind of touched the nerve of creation that made you want to create your own properties and books? tell us about what radioactive thing you got bitten by your origin yes. story uh mine was a, a, a radioactive fat guy bit me i used to be mm. skinny so now my superpower is eating food um now, uh, you know, just to be creative, I was, since I was a kid, I've been drawing and everything. I went to art school. I did graphic design and stuff for a long time. I always wanted to get into comics or do something in, like, fantasy work. So, luckily, CG came around and I got involved, you know, four years ago now. And I've created a few things. I've done a coloring book, comic. And, uh, well, I've done three comics. Now I've done... So here in CG in the past four years. So, um, Logan, that's actually funny that you said that. When I launched my first campaign, I like hit the live button because I had, I had no idea what I was doing, and I immediately went for like a run, like it was like a five k run around the block, and I actually got bit by a spider um, on my second lap. So, I yeah, I felt like this sharp pain in my leg, and I was like, saw that I had been bit by a spider, and I was like, it was meant to be. This is this is how it begins. Like the powers are incoming. So, Rob, is there any um, is there anybody in the creative field that you kind of like would like to emulate as far as your career trajectory? Anybody that just kind of you'd really like to follow the same path? Um, hmm, that's a good one. Um, I mean, I'd like to. My ultimate goal is to get as much of my work out there as possible to people and make a little money on the side. So, I guess. You know, being impactful and stuff like that. I mean, Jack Kirby's probably not a great person to emulate. <laughs> um, if you know, like I've read his biographies and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. He was, a, he was a nice guy and talented person. But um, See, that's an interesting thing. I think a lot of people would say that they would want to be along the lines of Jack Kirby because it's like my yeah. understanding of Kirby is that professionally he didn't have the best trajectory, but it's like I think those kind of – rough around the edges you know mm -hmm. those are the people who are going to be remembered you know what i mean like it's a different kind of memory that people are going to have of jack kirby than 
you know, say, I would say even Stan Lee. Like, I wish I would like to say that I'm a Kirby. Even though, yeah, but the, Kirby had issues. He was a pushover. He never said no. He did too many handshake deals. He got taken advantage of way too much. Okay. He, was a, I see what you're saying. he was a creative guy. He didn't stand up for himself. His wife had to do a lot of that stuff for him. He yeah. He got robbed of a lot of things that nowadays Stan Lee takes credit for. Everybody thinks Stan Lee came up with everything, and he I didn't. I mean, there's this proof that Stan Lee didn't. And same thing with Steve Ditko and stuff like that. Yeah. You mean you mean Stan Lee took credit for? It? I don't I don't know if he's actively taking yeah. credit for well, it now. Right gonna... now but <laughs> he's a little there bit even instances that... like Stan Lee didn't. He wouldn't say he did it. But he would actively not tell yeah. people he didn't like. There was quite a few times with Captain America, people were like, "Oh, the creator of Captain America." He never corrected them because he was not the creator of Captain America. Uh, Jack Kirby was. Yeah. So, you know, Stan Lee was just a kid when when that when when Captain America came out. So um, there, there's quite a few things, and the way they did work back then was different. So uh, Stanley yeah. would say, "Hey, I need twenty pages. Give me this plot," and then they would plot it out, draw it all out, and hand it in to him. He would just write in everything. But yeah, my understanding were... is that the kind of a lot of the better elements of the visual storytelling were Kirby, and then you know also Ditko and Stanley would just kind of like fill in the blanks, or I might be misremembering. And then basically come around and take all of the credit for right like he wrote the plots he created the characters and a lot of times he would say things like oh i came with the name of doc ock which would probably he did he probably came with the name but the look and the plot and everything with the characters was done by uh steve dicko yeah or jack kirby would help you know jack kirby helped design a lot of these original superheroes that he didn't even work on the book like black panther for example he came up with first designs for him he doesn't get any he doesn't get any credit for that it was yeah. all jack kirby it's it's a collaborative effort and back then those lines were great very much so i i use him as i mean maybe not emulate jack kirby so much as to use him as a warning of being yeah. in the comic book field and as a lot of professionals probably could tell you've been in for a long time, the comic book profession is very predatory. And it's not, I don't know any <laughs> comic book artist who's had a good time being a comic book artist in the in the professional industry. They've all gotten screwed one way or another. So yeah, um, I think it's it's definitely good to take like all the best of Jack Kirby and just improve upon yeah. it. Yeah, I think. I like on an art trajectory, yes. You could yeah. go on him like a, just an art as an artist. Yes, find out what oh, he, yeah. he went from one point to another. He didn't do his best work until he was in his forties. So, I mean, he was and in his fifties when he was doing New Gods. His speed as well. Didn't he draw like like six pages a day or something crazy? He was like, doing like twenty how. some books a month. <laughs> yeah, how is that even humanly possible? I don't know. He yeah. had a he had a formula. He had a system. A lot of that artwork, though, when they're rushing stuff out, if you look at it, it's not very good. Yeah, you know, it's when he had time, he could be a real artist. That definitely, uh, yeah, you could really see what he could do. Like New Gods is like, it's it's fantastic. So yeah, you, know, you look definitely. at stuff like that. So I think like Jack Kirby, I think would be you know look at him artistically. I think career wise, um, I don't know. I think I'm I want to be more like George Lucas or something like that, where you create something. Take it from other things, just be a schmo like that, create your own thing out of it, and you know, be a hack. George Lucas is a hack, so I don't mind being a hack. <laughs> but um, you mix things up in a bowl and make something new out of it because he's absolutely correct. There is nothing new. Um, in well, that actually makes sense cool. because so Tales of Neverterra is a is there, I was gonna pull it up here. <laughs> so Tales of Neverterra is a pulp book now, Kinda, yeah. um. Logan's only 12 years old, so he might not remember Pulp. Mm -hmm. And I'm functionally illiterate. So just for our sake, could you just give a kind of basic rundown of what Pulp means and also like what it means to you to kind of visit these old forms? Yeah, so it's it's based on like three things that I was influenced when I was younger. Um, uh, Conan the Barbarian, Sever Sword of Conan magazine. And then uh, old pulp stories, and that's back in the 20s and 30s, and that's where Conan the Barbarian came out of. This was before comic books. 
you know, there was these old pulp novels that were cheap. They printed them and they just, they just shipped them out. And uh, Howard wrote a lot of great, amazing stories and Conan was one of them. Um, and then there's lastly, there's Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, there's a dungeon magazine and a dragon magazine that's no longer, well, they kind of do a PDF now it's lame, but they used to do that where it had adventures and things like that about Dungeons and Dragons. So those were all things they're gone now. And I thought, well, let's make an entertainment magazine that kind of covers all of fantasy. Because most fantasy guys like D and D, they like sword and sorcery, they like this kind of stuff, and they'll read some stories too. So, hey, what's up, uh, comics meet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hey Dean. So hey, Dean. this is a anthology. What was your like? How did that work? Uh, how was it kind of like arranging? Um, working with different artists. Um, yeah. Like what was it like kind of putting that all together? And I'm, I'm asking because my, um, my series, Edimonia, the next book in that series is going to be an anthology. And mm -hmm. my goal is to have like a different artist for it's like 25 different stories and have a different artist, uh, team on each one. So this is a question I'm, I'm genuinely interested in. Um, well, I'm, you know, I've known all these guys for years now, you know, I've known, I've known all the artists on here for at least three years. Each. So it wasn't a matter of just like, hey, who wants to work on this? It's more like handcrafted. These are the people I know. These are the people I know do good work. Yes. I mean, I picked okay. every one of these guys I know personally, and then I know their work really well. I know their work ethic, and I know that, that each one of them have, have produced a book. So... Um, it wasn't a, this wasn't like a talent search kind of book. This was like, I needed gotcha. professionals who I knew, who I knew could do, could speak my language. Um, Cause the, the sequential stories, I wrote them, but I'm not a writer. I'm a, I'm a visual storyteller. And so I, I wrote, you know, if you saw my scripts, they're really, really loose, but these guys all knew what I was talking about. I could sit there and have a conversation with them. We could talk about the script and they knew exactly what I wanted. And then they were excited to do it. They, they, a lot of them do superhero stuff. You know, this is uh, John. This is the guy from uh, bullet maker. Yeah. It's Joe ball. Okay. Yep. John Joe ball. Yep. Why? Uh, what is the, the missing piece here? That's going to be the, uh, the logo for my studio and. Okay. You know, there's going to be a little Valeria, which is my thing, a little shop back to the Conan in the corner. So it's I just didn't know a mock-up of the cover. Just a white rectangle. Yeah, for now. It's just a mock-up of the cover. So. It says that's the name of a studio. It's just White Rectangle yeah. Comics. Yeah. White <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. White Rectangle. Only so. it's like Rekt, like R E K T. Rekt Tangle. Uh, yeah. So the, the four guys I got to do the sequentials were the best. And then the four regular stories I got, um, again, four great writers who've all produced something. I got Mark Middleton, who did Grave Robbers with me. I've already worked with him, so I know him. Uh, um, Edwin Acevedo, which I know him very well. We, we've we done stuff and talked a lot, and he's, he's great. He did The Ace. I got Phil Diaz, who's done, you know, four or five books now. Um, all great. And then we got uh, Eddie Winkler, who did uh, Sovereign Wolf, which yeah, he's a really good writer. I, I thought that book was really good. It was a fun read. So, And he's really into fantasy and all that stuff. So um, it was a pretty no-brainer, uh, these guys I knew, and asked them. Plus, they all owe me favors. Uh, <laughs> so of the four stories, like what can be expected? Is it different genres, or is it? all no. roughly the same genre it's all sword and sorcery but it takes place basically in the area of my first comic which was doom fate and it has some of the care some of the characters in the sequentials are from doom fate you don't have to have read doom fate this is kind of like flashbacks of their origin stories so you don't have to have read it or you can just take it as free um so, uh, sword and sorcery kind of tales they're not they're not like ongoing stories or one and done stories like Conan would be done. Or like you knew who Conan was already. You just read, Hey, this adventure of Conan one shot kind of deal. 
sometimes they'd have continuing stories, but most of the time it was, you know, uh, you know, stories they just made up with Conan in them. So it's kind of the same way with that. The four traditional stories are more, um, they expand upon uh, some of the world that um, uh, Novaterra is. So Doomfate takes place in Novaterra. Novaterra is like the bigger world, you know, like the earth, you know, Novaterra. And Doomfate's one little piece of that. So I have so many stories and ideas. I can't draw them all. I can't write them all. Um, so I need help. And this is one yeah. way to start expanding Doom Fate out into something bigger. Nice. Yeah, I think that that's that's actually really awesome that you have like a basically a continuation of your previous story, but you're like creating a whole entire universe and not just focusing on like just on the characters from your uh, previous story. You're actually like just fleshing out the universe that they live in. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah no, I think all... I heard you say something about there being a campaign, like a um, role-playing game tied to this yes there's a role-playing uh, adventure uh, you can plug it into just about any uh role-playing system it's going to be pretty agnostic that way and um you'll be able to play it's like a one night you know three to four players first level kind of thing and it actually ties into doom fate it's you could plug it in and make it a beginning of a campaign or you can actually if you read the comic you understand where this is coming from so it helps if you've already read it it'll flesh it out even more it's kind of cool to play through a bit of the comic it's like a it's like a side story like a like a a b story is going on behind the scenes you know you don't get to see in the comic but this adventure helps spell that out and you will don't need to have... dice involved at some point what's that will there be custom dice involved at some point if we get funded to you know if we start getting over ten thousand, yes i have plans for all that stuff Nice. The, the thing is, is yeah, that's when I'm going to start rolling out, well, no pun intended, uh, a lot of the dice and stuff like that. Oh, you said dice. I thought you said custom dice. I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. We're going to have those two. That's so confused. Yeah, I was gonna, like, what? Yeah. He's yeah. going to fjord some water, <laughs> save a town. Uh, let's take a look at these perks. So the featured perk, $25, mm -hmm. 40 page magazine. Random B and W sketch, card by Rob, bagged and boarded. This is the featured one. Um, yes, and you get all the stretch goals that come with it. The first stretch goal kicks off at when we're funded, and we go up after that. So nice, uh, nice. my sketch cards normally go for about twenty five bucks. So basically, you get the magazine and the stretch goals for free. So there's a digital good. tier, so you don't look down your nose at people who only read digital comics. That's good. That's good. It's Rob the Replicator in the chat. Yeah, What's up, in Rob? here with this Rob Hawk? What's up? I just flew this ball. All right, everybody be cool. Yeah, everybody cool. Now listen, this is our first live campaign on this show. So if you're in the chat, if you're watching the replay, back this book. Not because it looks awesome or because the creator seems very competent and is putting together a great looking book, but because the goal of the show is for Logan and I to become legitimate. So if we can get a backer. Oh, well, then you pick the wrong person to help you get legitimate. I'm the wrong that you should have. I don't want to have to kick Rob you on. your own. You're our guest. I don't want to have to kick you back this book today. So Logan and I can become more legitimate streamers. That's true. Okay. We want the message of this episode to be that it's about us. We just it's, want to make I mean, that it clear. Is. Let's be honest here. It's yeah. about us. It's about our crappy show. True. Epic. Rob, what is Epic? Epic, you get everything that's in that that one tier. You get all the stretch golds. You get the sketch card. But you also get a first printing copy of Doom Fate, which is 60-page graphic novel, uh, full color. And then you get some uh, prints that were with the campaign. I'll probably throw in some other, other extra stuff I have left over from the campaign in there, too. I've got a few posters and things like that left over. But I don't want to put that on there if I'm just in case I didn't have enough. But um, yeah, and you'll get both of those uh, for that, and you get all the stretch goals, everything else for the for the campaign. It's basically everything that has to do with Doom Fate or Novaterra. You get it that I have out so far. Nice. So, Are you happy with how the campaign's gone so far? Yeah, I mean we're over fifty percent, and and we made fifty three percent in five days. I think nice. that's pretty good. 
um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of books funding this month. So, I mean, I would love to be funded already, of course. But, right. Um, Are you, uh, uh, cause I launched about a month ago and I'm still exhausted. I know I just want to kind of parlay that back and forth. Do you find it as exhausting as I do? Yeah. So like right now I'm trying to get some work, work done, you know, drawing and stuff, but yeah. It's kind of hard when you're running a campaign, you're kind of a little stressed out and you're losing sleep. And plus and, Logan and I are frightfully, frightfully boring. Um, so you have to sit there and listen to us. So I'm very sorry. To, sorry about that. I'm mostly, no, I, think, I think Logan's cool. He might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand that. I, 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 I get that. Well, guys in the chat, tales of Novaterra, you heard it from the man himself, which is me, of course, not Rob, uh, back this book today. Um, it looks awesome. It looks very well thought out. It looks like a lot of attention to detail has been placed. Um, and we are going to move into the top five. What? What? Yo, 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 this shit is actually trash. So the top five for this week is our top five favorite video games of all time. Now, there are a number of different ways you can kind of approach that question. Um, the, the two, uh, let me tell you what my, my two ideas about this question are, and you guys can tell me what you think. You can have either, um, if you're stranded on a deserted island right and you only have a few video games what games would you want to have on that deserted island with you the -hmm. other way of looking at it would be what experience playing that game do you cherish the most like that just that that experience the first time you had it the first time you experienced which of those do you covet more than all of the others um i went with the latter what experience do you do you just cherish the most uh what do you guys think well, I think it's pretty crazy that on a deserted island that they have both electricity, and if you're playing newer games, they have Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's pretty I mean, crazy. That's, what that's I think. probably the future of deserted islands, though. <laughs> the deserted island uh, revolution. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I went for um, you know, it's like my fifth year because uh, I'm old. I'm fifth year of uh, gaming, uh, decade of gaming. So I kind of went with like my more influential games from each decade so i kind of went back in time and thought okay what were my favorites of that time period going on up so well i said before the show that i predict my top five is going to be them like the the this most shit is actually trash uh mine is going to be the most trash uh so if you're in the chat and you want to tell us how trash that's usually uh, the case yeah well five. i mean that's usually how it is Rob says Baldur's Gate 2. It's um, actually very close. Some of my picks. I mean, no, no offense, Rob, but no one made asked a, you. an audible noise of approval from the next room when she heard me say Baldur's Gate 2. So, um, it's a good game. Yeah. I mean, not to me, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to go with my... Actually, you know what? Rob, you're our guest. What is your fifth favorite video game of all time? So we're going to go all the way back to the 1980s. 1984 or five, I believe. It was a game I had, uh, you know, I was a 13 year old kid. I had just got my Commodore 64. The game I loved on that game was called, it's called The Bard's Tale. It was a text based, but it also had graphics. It was the first game where you could actually uh, play the game. You would move down like a dungeon hallway and then a monster would pop in and you'd have to type in what your moves are and all this stuff. And, it was um, really cool. And later on, that became, you know, things like Zelda and other games like that. It really launched off of uh, Bald- um, off of uh, Bard's Tale, one of my favorite games of all time, especially the 80s. Um, and then a uh, honorable like mention. A click game? It's not a click game. <laughs> it didn't have, didn't have mice back then. Um, oh. it, was all, it was all inputs. So like you like go forward one or go forward two and then you know attack one you'd have to type all that in and then you had to search the room and you'd have to do all these things. There was no you didn't have a mouse back then. So 
And then had keyboards some... but not mice. Right. There were no there were no mice yeah. back then. Mice didn't come till you know, kinda until the apples started getting popular and a lot of the IBM machines. But no, there was no interactive. You had to boot everything off of a, a floppy disk. And this big I mean this the the floppy drive was about the size of a shoebox. So um it, it was a pretty it was pretty cool. It was 64, Commodore 64 is megabytes. That wasn't its hertz. That wasn't that's how much memory it had. Yeah. That's all you could do. So um everything was text based, but it did have graphics and they were cool. So look it up the Bard's Tale. That's kind of the beginning of our video game RPGs. There was another one called Zork, which was all text based, but um that one really thrust everything forward by putting graphics and things in the game. And then I would say another an honorable mention in the 80s, I would say it's Fantasy Star. Everybody like Final Fantasy or Legend of Zelda. I was a Fantasy Star guy. So um, that was another good one in the 80s if you're looking for role-playing games. All right, Logan, fifth favorite video game of all time. Were you supposed to make lists for this? Or? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I got a list. So uh, I have a list this time. Last time I didn't. So it was about the year uh, 2009, I think, is when this game came out. Uh, so I was probably also about 13 or so when that came out. Uh, <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal wow. Kombat 11. Okay. Yeah, the the newest entry uh, to the the franchise. It has um, they kept the fa- the fatality thing, but since the graphics are like so high tech, uh, when it came out, they had like these really awesome like animations and like really cool looking fatalities. Uh, I don't know if it says something about me that I enjoyed it, but I really enjoyed like they really nailed like the violence and like they had a bunch of gore in it. So I think that's I like that game. The original game was banned back in the day when I was in the eighties. Yeah, yeah I, I just kind of it. assumed that like after three, um, or I guess it'd be UMK three, Mortal Kombat four came out, and I don't know anybody that liked that game. So in my head, that's where it just stopped. Like they just stopped making games after that i, I genuinely there, didn't know there is uh there is a lot of people now that like they're like oh as soon as mortal kombat went 3d like with graphics it, it got bad i've heard a lot of people say that even about the the newest game they don't like it because of that so I yeah i've heard that yeah the, the original was pretty good it was good on the sega genesis when they ported it over it was a good version of it we could sit there and just wanna, 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 wanna. you just hit like yeah. two buttons and kill everybody. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. I think I have mentioned it before, but I actually played MK3 competitively. Like I would actually travel to tournaments, and hmm. that was <clears throat> I was still in high school, but that was when I learned just how do, how wide the skill margin is between like enthusiast and like a serious player. Because I would go and I would compete. Usually, it would usually be divided into like amateur and advanced. And I would dominate the amateur bracket and get moved into the advanced bracket and just get completely annihilated every single time. Like, I had no idea how many people took fighting games as seriously as they did. Serious business. All right, so I'm going to go with my number five and um, my utter video game, Weebery. My fifth favorite game of all time is all the way back in the year 2015. And it is Undertale. Um, Good game. It was one of two games ever that genuinely made me misty-eyed. Um, it's not a great game for like mechanics, uh, you know, combat, anything like that. It's an it's like a fan base simple. Yeah, like it's it's not a great game, but like the story and the music are some of the best I've ever experienced. Uh, The fact that, if you happen to not know, Undertale was made by this guy named Toby Fox, who was a amateur online composer. He would compose (laughs) tracks for fan games and decided to make his own game. He He did a crowdfunding campaign. It funded, and this one guy basically um, made one of the most popular games of all time. And kind of an incredible thing it's it's easily my top three soundtracks of all time and mm. it genuinely is just an amazing it's one of those games where like you can't you can't have that experience again you play through it and right. you're never getting that back you will never have that again 
Uh, yeah, it's so a good it's, game. I liked it. Uh, yeah. I haven't played it, but I do remember the like craze that was going around when it first came out. It's yeah. And, I mean, it's uh, one of those things where like the fans of it are make it kind of embarrassing to even like because they're <laughs> the community is just insane. Just like, generous. Yeah, it's. But it's a, it's it's almost an anti game. It's not really a game. It's more of an yeah. anti game. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, I wouldn't consider it. It's almost it almost goes beyond a video game. There's very few games that can do that that go beyond video games, and that's that's one of them. Yeah, there's all these like fourth wall breaking moments where the game starts criticizing you for how you're playing it if you're not playing it right, and asking you like, why are you doing this? It's yeah, like it's crazy. It's obviously it's very meta. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. obviously uh, makes you question your reality. Like Earthbound. Makes you question your reality in a few parts. You're like, what? What's... Yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. Is this game talking to me? Yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting game. Fall. I, keep, I keep seeing Rob like putting his picks in the in the chat. Yeah, no, he's giving he's his permission. Playing along, uh, we welcome it. It's good, but it's not good. Rob, Rob though. Rob, See, that's why I go that. by passion because I don't want to be associated with Rob yeah. Arnold in any way, shape, Rob. or form. You have to change your name legally. Yeah. Well, that's Rob, and this is Rob. Oh, okay. Rob, <laughs> what that's is true. your fourth favorite video game of all time? So we move, we shift into the 90s, and 90s is like a great time. It's really hard to pick one. Uh, so I had to go to the end of the 90s because the 90s was like, I mean, we could be here all day just talking about the 90s, what games are in the 90s. Is it? That was That was the time for video games. I mean, we went from the 8-bit era all the way to the 64-bit era all in one decade. It was, it was pretty cool. There was so much stuff in there. But um, towards the end, um, my favorite system of all time was a Dreamcast. And mm. I like fighting games. So my favorite game on there and uh, during the time was Soul Calibur. Um, honorable mention to all the Sonic games because when they came out in the early 90s, I saw that in Sega. I just loved all, all, almost all of them. And then on Dreamcast, they had um, Sonic Adventure, which was great. But Soul Calibur was a fantastic uh, fighting game. I used to do some tournaments there for it here and there, too. And I used to do pretty well. And it, it was it was a lot of – it's a really cool game. Um, if you can go back and find an emulator or add a copy of it. Because I don't think it was ever in the arcade. You mentioned uh, Fantasy Star. Didn't wasn't there a Fantasy Star game on the Dreamcast? Yes, there was. It was. It's one of the first online games for a console. I think it was. Yeah, the first Fantasy one. Star Online. Yeah. Yeah, I played that for a little while too. That was more of. It wasn't really an online game so much. It was you were in rooms, and then you would be linked up with people and go attack bosses. It's almost like Monster Hunter now. So, like, if you ever played Monster Hunter, it's very. They took it from Fantasy Star Online. That was the first one because they would thrust you into a dungeon. You'd have to go kill things and then kill a boss or hunt for a certain monster in certain areas with other people. Um, yeah, that was a cool game. That that was I had that one as well. But Dreamcast yeah, it's always is, fun when a game thrusts into you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was the the original Soul Calibur was that 3D? I haven't actually seen the yeah. original. Yeah, it was a 3D game. The fighting on it was so it was it was perfect. The controller now is what everybody uses basically on Xbox. So it, it was a fantastic uh, game. Loved it. Some of those Dreamcast time. games, man, they're like ridiculously expensive to track down. Yeah, because it, the system, like, it did really well. It came out the gate, but I think Microsoft kind of screwed them over. I mean, the yeah. guy who developed the Dreamcast for Sega went on to go work for Xbox, and they basically copied the whole system anyway. So, you know, they kind of screwed them over right out the bat. But that had some really fantastic games um, on it. Uh, probably some of the best ever. I, I wish I would have kept my Dreamcast. Goat soundtrack, too. Yeah, so, Logan, so what's your favorite dope, man? video game of all time? What do you have? Okay. Going all the way back to 2018, Logan? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember when this game came out. I'd have to look it up. But uh, Fallout 4 is my, my number four. That, that is one of the newer them. ones, but I think it's pretty good. It's, um, I believe, was it the first in the, the franchise to be like straight up open world? I, I can't remember. Yeah, but it has, it has a really good open world. Uh, and I don't know, it's, it's pretty fun. I, I like the 
I feel like just the Fallout world in general is pretty fun. So I could have picked any of them, but I, I wanted to go up four because uh, I've noticed that usually doesn't top people's lists. So I like, uh, I kind of like underdog games. Yeah, isn't four the one that had like a lot of problems and it was trash? And <laughs> this shit is actually trash. It yeah. might have had a lot of I don't remember. It might have had a lot of bugs, but I, I, I remember it, that one. I like played it later movie. when I was like all patched. So. Oh okay. So I remember like seeing lots and lots of problems with that one. And I think Bethesda's so. Bethesda's not well known for putting out top quality. <laughs> not at all. No. no. The the newest one that they have. What is it? Uh, sixty four. Mm -hmm. I think it's called that. That one has a lot of problems still. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Did. It was it was released one. actually broken. I'm pretty sure. Like. So, what's up, General Piggy? What's up, hey, Piggy? Hey, what's up, Ace? What's up? So, not to yeah. drop a dime on family, but um, my mother-in-law and her husband went to Las Vegas purely to visit areas from Fallout Four. Like <laughs> that's how much. <clears throat> That's, pretty that's awesome. how committed they are. Yeah, it's pretty nerdy. Pretty yeah, it's pretty nerdy. Yeah, it's a good game. It's one of those ones that's that's underrated, though. I have a couple on my my list. Yeah, there's like some of the newer entries are hated just because they're new. I feel like of older franchises, so I like picking the newer ones usually because they get a lot of hate, but they always have like pretty redeeming qualities. I'd say so. So my number four, and I'm starting to feel like, um, like. You remember, like, oh, a couple weeks ago when Bancroft was talking to, uh, who was he talking to? I don't Kelsey watch Shannon, that show. They were talking about, yeah, they were talking about, like, just, like European books. That's kind of what my, my list feels like. Michael Bancroft like, talk about European books? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, that's wow, kind that of what. Must have, what been, mm, must have been amazingly conversation. <laughs> So, <laughs> so my number four is all the way back in the year 2017. Um, and it is the How's game. How's I go? Yeah. It is the game Hollow Knight. Um, yeah, I have heard about that a lot. A yeah. It's okay. Game. Metroidvania uh, released by Team Cherry. I think it's their first game. Again, it was something that was done through crowdfunding. Um, again, endlessly gorgeous soundtrack. Um, composed by, I don't remember his name, but if you look him up, his credits for making music, it's almost nothing. So he's done like a few things here and there, and then he put this soundtrack together that's just all of these like sweeping orchestral suites. Um, and the game is just gorgeous. Every It's like a massive map, you know, like any Metroidvania where you have to, um, you go to one part of the game, you get an ability that lets you unlock more and more of the map, so it just becomes more and more massive. All of the areas feel um, completely fresh. The aesthetics are very different. It has some of the best boss fights I've ever encountered in a game. Um, the kind of ones that you can go back and do like a boss rush, and you just that muscle memory stays with you for every last fight. So absolutely gorgeous game. And I don't even think I'm ever going to finish it. It's just, it's so endless. And there is a large community of people online who are just like chomping at the bit to get um, Silk Song, the sequel. Rob asks, when do we choose the good games? Well, certainly not any of the ones you picked. You, you Australian. This shit is actually trash. They just got Morrowind down there last week. So that's why he's picking that. Yeah, that's true. We're, I'm talking about a game from six years ago. It's, it still has to get down there. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm. I was going to buy uh, Hollow Knight after my friends had uh, told me it was really good, but at that point, I feel like um, I was just gonna kind of wait until the newer one came out because I didn't. I didn't know how long it was gonna take. It was supposed to be like didn't get delayed. So it's like Dude, it's so ridiculous. The the new game is called Silk Song, and it was one of the bonuses unlocked in the crowdfunding campaign, and they just decided to take that and just turn it into an all new game. And now at this point, people have just been waiting like. More than a year for it. Yeah, I never crowdfund video games. It's the worst. Thing. That's true. Well, all the complications that can come with game dev, I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, yeah. A solid they can get like ten million dollars. That's nowhere near what they need to make a game. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, I think um, what was it, Shenmue, where they did a crowdfunding yeah. campaign, and then almost immediately it came out that the company had backing from like giant companies, and it was like. You didn't need to crowdfund this at all. You already have all of the support you need. You didn't. That's not yep. what this platform is actually for. And what is it? 
what is Shenmue? Is that the the orca at SeaWorld? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's a. It's a. It was a Dreamcast game actually. They had Shenmue yeah. one and two. Uh, and it was wasn't it, was it like ninety percent quick time events? It was the Japanese Grand Theft Auto. I mean, okay. that's my best way to describe it. It was actually, I think it came out before Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah, because it was on Dreamcast before. And it was an open world. It was one of the first open world 3D games where you went around and did stuff. It was very Grand Theft Auto. Well, Grand and Theft Auto was essentially a clone of Simpsons Hit and Run. Let's you know, let's be real. Well, it took that, but it really took a lot from Shenmue. So, um, which was a really cool game. I played through that entire game on Dreamcast. It was fantastic. But when they, they were supposed to do sequel and all this stuff and Dreamcast went under and all this other stuff, so it didn't happen. But um, the second one's supposed to be pretty decent if you're a fan of the first one. But Grand Theft Auto came out and just blew everything up. So, yeah, with that kind of stuff. But it's one of the now first open world about... games on console. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't I, mean I have like heard of Shenmue, point. but I, I wanted, I just wanted to make that that joke. So hopefully everyone appreciated it. Well, we all found it offensive, Logan. <laughs> Divinity no, Sin Two is really. We didn't good, want to bro. talk about it. We're just gonna let it, let that offensive comment hang in the air for a while, and hope that that's, nobody that's remembers okay. it. <laughs> so, uh, um, Rob, what is your third favorite video game of all time? So now we get into the 21st century, beginning of the, the aughts there, and I uh, gotta go with Halo, the original Halo back in the day, first Xbox, still a strong game, really good. You can get it on PC. And it's still good. It's a good shooter. Um, there was not very good console shooters at the time. Um, uh, they were all pretty garbage. But then that one came out and just did it right and um, created a whole huge franchise. I mean, uh, two and three are really good too. But one is just way out there. And um, I think it defined. It made it where console shooters could be good. Before that, they were not. Because he had Unreal was out and Doom and things like that were out already. And it was all PC. But when that game came out, that was that that changed that changed everything in it. The story's cool. It's cool science fiction. Um yeah, so Halo, yeah. Halo is like the one I played that so much when I had got my Xbox. Um Yeah. Surprisingly, I do uh, remember that game, and we, my family had the original Xbox, and so that was like some of my best childhood memories. Is me and my brother playing one, two, and three, mm-hmm. like all all the time. Mm-hmm. Great game. I was kind of out of consoles at the time, um, so maybe you can help me answer this question. Did Halo make the Xbox what it is? Like, does the Xbox still succeed without without having Halo as a launch title? Hmm. Yeah, I think Halo was the game for it because it had the networking aspect to it, and you could bring your ex. Everybody could bring their Xboxes over to someone's house and have and a LAN party. Play. Yeah, yeah, you could have a LAN party. You could play four player split screen on it. Um, I don't think there was any other games that were really doing that on the Xbox at the time. Um, there was some other games on there that were good, like uh, Mech Warrior and Unreal was on there too. It was a lot of fun. There was a lot of other cool games and some good platformers and fighting games. I feel it like uh, I feel like Halo was like the the most like I don't know how to say it like structured game because I feel like a lot of the games on the early Xbox were like really like just bizarre. Like there's a lot of really weird titles in there that mm-hmm. didn't really make any sense. Like Odd Worlds, I remember that that was some game. Well, Odd World, 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 that. before that. <laughs> like, there's all those like, weird things like, on there. But if you look at that time with the launch and everything in the time of that first Xbox, there's not too many games that are still making games now. Yeah. Mm. There's not too many that weren't already franchises. I'm just saying, like, came out of the beginning of the Xbox and made something. Uh, it's not too many. Uh, I found it hard to forgive um, Microsoft for buying up my favorite developer of all time, Rare, and then just not having doing anything nothing with for them. them to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what they're going to do with Bethesda. That's what they're going to do with Blizzard. They're just going to. I thought that was pretty dumb too. Yeah. Because Rare has a lot of good ones, right? They have they're they're the ones behind Banjo and Kazooie, right? And they also have uh, Conquerors, which Battle never got toads, anything. Um, 
Battletoads, so Donkey Kong Country, the first one, which was like when that well, game they can't dropped, do that, but yeah, that's Nintendo. It yeah. was insane. <laughs> like it was Not insane. Anymore. It was insane how much better that game looked than everything else. Um, and then Killer Instinct, which is my favorite fighting game of all time. Yeah, but the, all those guys who worked on those games are either old or dead. So don't they? They still make Killer Instinct, I think, right? The like, guy who made Killer Instinct actually came back to make the new one. Like he was. Leading, yeah, ask he was Phil leading. Diaz about that. He would know. Yeah. Yeah, I believe they still make them from time to time. I remember there was like a Halo crossover a few years ago, actually. Yeah, there was. was there was a Halo in it. crossover. Yeah. Yeah. Logan, what awesome. is your third favorite video game of all time? My third favorite is Cuphead. I don't know if you guys know that one. Wow. Fantastic game. Yeah, I love the graphics in it. It's uh, styled like, like 30s fantastic. animation. Yeah, and it has good, a good soundtrack. That was um, studio recorded, like all traditional instruments and stuff. Uh, it's really fun, and this is going to trigger some of the people that play the older games that are considered hard, but I, I find it to be like a good challenge as well, which I like. It kind of it really punishes you so at some parts. Because it's all like it's, easy, but it's all like muscle memory. We're like, yeah, we'll play Contra. Or come back to me. I do want to play Contra. Actually, yeah, Contra is very good. Damn, that's it, hard. I, I Contra is good Contra with two shirts. I have sure. to find an emulator that isn't a Chinese scam, but I will play Contra one day. Yeah. The you thing about Cuphead, I didn't play it um, because I. Anytime I watched footage of it, and I would see like a video of a boss fight, it didn't seem like the visual feedback that you were damaging the boss, like it didn't look like you were really even hurt. You know how like a lot of times when you're fighting a boss, it'll flash or yeah. it'll do something to kind of visually yeah, flash indicate or something. I yeah. wasn't seeing that when I was watching people play Cuphead. And from, you know, games like Contra, you know, I, I kind of need that. I don't know why, but it just it just put me off of the game. It's cool. Yeah, they, do? they like flash white or something. Yeah, they do. Oh, do they do flash well, from the game, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really like that game, though, because uh, I'm a fan of old animation. Before I was uh, going to become a comic book artist, I was going to be an animator, and I was very inspired by those old rubber hose animations. So when that game came out, I was like freaking out. I was like fanboying over it. It's a good game. I have the art book for it. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. You should get it. Yeah, yeah I should. Uh, so it's should a really good that, book. Yeah, yeah so it probably is awesome. my getting... third favorite game of all time. We're going to go all the way back to the year 1988. I was um, non existent. When I was a kid renting video games from the store, and it is uh, Mega Man 2. Mm -hmm. um, Mega Man, yeah. I remember mind two. blowing soundtrack to this day. Tons of tons of bangers that you probably you probably heard like half of these songs just either in used as background music on like a lot of video game related content on YouTube or covers. It's music that you hear all of the time. Um, I will never forget the experience of I think it's either Wiley's Castle One or Two. When you climb up all the way to the top of this thing, and then you're going, and it's like a little bit of platforming, and you jump off the edge, and there's like a little thing about this wide, and you run to the end of it, and there's another one waiting for you there, and then there's all these single blocks, and you start hopping from block to block to block to block, and then it's completely hard. out of nowhere, a gigantic robot dragon just emerges from the abyss below, and you have to just keep running from this dragon, hopping across these blocks, and then... The, sc the screen just stops scrolling altogether, and you have to fight the dragon. And it was just like, it it blew my fucking mind as a kid to have that the first time it happened. Just an amazing game. Uh, the best in the Mega Man series, bar none. I was more of a Castlevania guy with that stuff, but Castlevania was really good, too, about that time. Castlevania was also very good. What yeah, was your favorite yeah, right. Castlevania game? I think I liked two. I think it was two I really liked. Oh, okay. It's the one with the whip and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played on Game Boy. It was really good. Yeah, so I, I went back and one. played some of those. And the first one, I, I actually played it on an emulator. I don't think I could have beaten the first one if I wasn't using an emulator because you had a, you, you could do a save state. And I think without that, that just balls out hard. Tough. It's tough stuff. Yeah, yeah Mega, Man was, uh, Mega Man was always one of those games that I've wanted to emulate. I was actually going to get a, one of the SNES. That's one of the consoles I think some of the games were made, right? I was going to get one of those on eBay once and like 
just to play Mega Man because I thought the designs looked really cool. And I had heard uh, like rock covers of the songs on YouTube that I, I would like put into a playlist and listen to. But the S the SNES, like it has the worst controller ever created. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. I mean, it's 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 you know I have big hands, and it's like holding a little you know, and you get current. It's it's the worst controller ever created. Yeah, it does you know? look like a calculator. Uh, I don't yeah. know how it feels, but it, it does. Yeah, it's better to emulate it and use like a nice modern day. Yeah, definitely. The best controller I ever used. I, mean, I know we're not talking about it, but best controller I ever made, and I wish they would have made it anymore. Was a Wavebird for the GameCube. That's the best controller ever made. Period. What's going and, on, pops? Hey, pops. Hey, yeah, I almost cheated when I was making my list because I was thinking about the games in terms of like an actual like game, and so yeah. I was gonna put um, the Mega Man Anniversary Collection that has Mega Man one through nine on it. But mm -hmm. I thought that would kind of be cheating. You to... said no franchises. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Only one we banned a franchise that I included, so. Yeah. That would have been hypocritical if you pick, did that. That's why I didn't pick Sonic. There was too many good ones to pick that I liked. There's uh, also an equally uh, an equal amount of bad ones as well now. So. The last games I tested for Nintendo were on the GameCube 1080. Oh, that's cool. What is the 1080 Avalanche? It might be a game. I genuinely think the 1080 Avalanche was named so it would always appear when you put in a list of games. Like it would always be up at the top. That was just my conspiracy theory at the time. Metro Prime. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, Metro, like that's GameCube was a good system, but they they abandoned it real quick. Too fast, in my opinion. Rob, they, what is your second favorite video game of all time? My second favorite video game, now we're into the teens, it's, it's World of Warcraft. No game, no video game out of all the games I've been playing for four decades, five decades, have I put as many hours as I have into World of Warcraft. The game is shit now, and the developers are shit now, and the game sucks. But you're talking those first, like, uh, classic Burning Crusade and... Um, uh, the Lich King, those three expansions changed the game and role play, online role playing games and how everything was done. Everything after that, but now there's so many other better ones. They just didn't improve. They sat around, did nothing. But boy, man, that game changed everything. Um, it's huge game all over the world, and uh, I just love the art, the aesthetics of it. The story was, you know, basically ripped off of Dungeons and Dragons. And everything else. And, you know, just uh, I love playing the horde. That was my favorite side. And uh, the creature designs, the artists, uh, uh, the the gameplay in the early days was a lot of fun. Um, and they improved upon it. It's just unfortunate the company's just gone into and they don't care about the game the past, like, I'd say past seven, eight years. They haven't really given a shit. Was anybody it. ever able to get a vanilla server going i know that that was a thing well they they came out with vanilla servers they took uh recently but they got shut down though didn't they no uh yeah. blizzard actually put out oh, classic servers yes oh. but they screwed that up too i thought there was so, a third party uh like studio like just like fans that yeah no i think blizzard down, shut right? them down yeah, yeah but then, the, but then blizzard, the there was so much demand to put out a classic yeah. server blizzard actually did it yeah so they and then I think there was a classic ago. moment at BlizzCon where representatives from Blizzard basically told the crowd, "You don't want this." And in, in with yeah. respect to a vanilla, and like, can we, can yeah, we please you, just you think you want to play you vanilla? Don't. Yeah, you don't want this. Like, no, we really do. There's there's lots of us, and we want to play. Can we? No, you don't. No, want you're that. wrong. Yeah, don't want we it. know better. But that, there's, I've never seen a game where they. Well, you could do a whole thing about the downfall of Warcraft, but I've never seen a game where they're taking in hundreds of millions of dollars a month and then they minus things from the game. Mm. I, I don't understand how that game... It's so mismanaged. There could have been decades and decades of that game, but it's just been really... It's really bad now. And it'll lead into my number f five pick, but or number one uh, right now, because I, I went by decades. Um, but, boy, I played so much World of Warcraft... I think I have like two, uh, 
close to 200 days played in it. It's a crazy amount. So the only other game like that was Civilization V that I played as much. So Geek Avengers uh, says they kept making the game easier. Would you say that's true or? I think they made no. I don't think it was about making the game easier. It was about making it accessible. But they had these systems they kept putting in to try to retain. You know, they started losing lots of people because the game wasn't fun anymore. And they they kept they changed things every expansion, sometimes between patches, so drastically that people are like, "Why am I playing this?" Like every time I come back for an expansion, my characters would play differently. That's just ridiculous. Because you know, there's another really popular series out there that a lot of the fans say, wow, you've really made this, you know, piss easy and kind of ripped the heart out of it, the yeah. challenge. But we can't talk about that game company here because yeah, everybody in the chat would leave. So, <laughs> But, the, you know, and the company's just mismanaged and all the controversies and everything else. And they put out other games. I mean, they used to put out quality stuff. Um, the characters were interesting and everything like that. And I, you know, I, I the game just lost me. So uh, I, I'll probably never go back to it probably now, but a good 14, 15 years playing that game pretty consistently. Uh, I remember with World of Warcraft, um, it was one of those games that was uh, pretty big when I was uh, a kid and I wanted to play the game. But I had to just uh, admire others that played it because I had very Christian parents and they thought it was it was not great that there was like w like witchcraft in the game. So I just I just admired it from a distance. And also mm -hmm. it was, they said it was too expensive. It was like monthly you had to pay, right? So yeah, and that's the other thing with the game too. You pay for the expansion, you pay a monthly fee. Yeah, and they have a cash shop, so it's like. What's going like, on here? I was like, look, mom, there's a panda man on the cover. Because at the time they were doing that expansion. Oh, the panda, was a yeah, that's kind of going in my yeah. opinion. What is, the, what is the Burger King of games? What is the Burger King of video games? Is it Snood? Um, let's see. Burger King. Of, it's not McDonald's, but a little bit, a little bit better. By Burger McDonald's. King, I'm, I'm assuming he means This shit is actually trash! Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It would be too easy to pick like a bootleg game. I feel like that'd be too easy for Target. I feel like that's yeah, something that was actually you can't intended say, like, to be Cheetah good. Men. Yeah, it has to be like something that was intended to be good and then failed. Something horribly broken. I think, I think Arrogant Ape is trying to trick us into saying the name of that game that we can't talk about. Because mm. that that's actually a pretty good contender. <laughs> he said mm. he said uh, COD is the the Burger King of games. Probably that's probably good. That's a good that's choice. True. Call of Duty sucks. It'll yeah. give you uh, it'll give you food poisoning. Yeah, nowadays it does feel like it's the uh, like the same meal as it used to be, but it's like chewed up and like vomited onto like a plate. You know what I would I say? Like it's you know what it is. It well, it would probably be Fortnite. Would probably be the Burger King of games. See, I would say Saints Row. I think the Saints Row games are just trash like oh, there that's was true. nothing even <laughs> yeah. it was like they were trying to make a gta game but just fill it with like the most lol so random things and it just but it just flopped like none of it lands nothing it's not remotely interesting i don't care if you have people running around clubbing people to death with giant purple dildos it just it just didn't it didn't hit there was nothing <laughs> they did have a pink cat though in that game that i would draw a lot as a kid because i was obsessed with the design of it I don't remember his name, but I guess that can be a redeeming factor of the game. I don't remember what his name was. It's like a <laughs> mad, mad scientist pink cat. Well, Logan, you are up. Uh, what is your second favorite game of all time? Uh, it's another new entry to an old franchise, so people might not like it, but Doom Eternal I thought was really well done. Uh, it was pretty cool, and I know that the older Doom games are like really arcade-styled, and they kind of went back to that. As nice. well as having really, really good graphics, and it Doom wasn't was like it, it wasn't like overly gritty like the the 2016 one uh, was. It kind of embraced that like subtle like silliness like the older. I remember like the 90s Doom games were kind of silly mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. It kind of embraced that, and it was it was just really well done. Like graphics and animation and all that stuff was really fun. Yeah, I can't help but respect a game, a game developer putting out a game 
that immediately captures the adoration of the old fan base, which is all I've heard about Doom Eternal. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they put out some game and um, the fans were like, the older fans were like, eh, everybody loved that game. So I got to, even though I'm not a big Doom fan, I got to put respect on it. Yeah, I, was, and, I like Cold uh, more. But yeah, something that I, I liked as well is that a bunch of SJWs told them that they are misogynistic because their care the main character is like a big really burly buff dude that kills things with his bare hands and guns and they refuse to change it they said you just have to deal with it and they even actually made like allegories to like illegal aliens uh they compared them like they made like kind of a parody with the demons they're like don't refer to them as demons refer to them as mortally challenged beings or something like that and they have like a whole allegory to them that made people really angry and oh, like, microsoft the just the gun. still yeah, it just stuck to their guns with it, so I thought it was really funny. Microsoft owns them now. It's all going to be changed. <laughs> They're going to yeah, go SCW, probably. Yeah, it will. It's a good chance, or but I liked that. They'll just okay. shelve it. They'll just get rid of it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny, though. And they were like, Earth is a melting pot of the universe. Like, the demons. <laughs> that's true. We get the pink hat with the ears. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. my number two game of all time is from the year 2005. It's been released on every console known to man, um, except for the Commodore 64. And I can't even say the name of the game in my normal voice. There's a, there's a certain voice that you have to use when you say the name of this game, but it is Resident Evil 4. Mm. Four? Um, four. Mm. Yeah, I know. I know. It's when it gets, it's, 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 it's the height, but it's also the downfall. Um, it's got action schlock. Um, you start off the game in a village and man, when you hear that first chainsaw from the chainsaw guy and you realize that you've got like six bullets and 30 people plus a chainsaw guy coming at you. Um, I pooped, you know, I pooped. There's kind of a, a look of disgust eclipsing our guest face. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rob, Rob, tell, tell us how you feel. Uh, about Resident Evil 4? Well, they lost me on Code Veronica, so on the Dreamcast. I, I haven't gone back to Resident Evil games since then, but for all I've seen Resident Evil, you know, I watch Twitch and stuff to watch it. It's just, it looks more of the same. It's boring. You walk in a room, go down the hall, open a door, then you go in, there's a zombie all of a sudden in the corner, you can't quite see him. And then you got to run out the window, and then you run out, and you got to go. It's menu the game. You open it up. Yeah. Menu, 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 menu. Well, the Close over it. the shoulder. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Open the menu. Reload. Um, was a bit of a Boring. game changer at the time. Um, Gears of War later adopted it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think it's. I don't think anybody's doing it anymore. But at the time, it was like revolutionary to not have to just be like. Yeah. You know, from a top-down perspective. Um, it, it's you like kind the of, first... you kind of sabotage your list when you mentioned a better game while describing it. You're like, oh, Gears of War also did it, a far superior <laughs> game. No, I mean it was, you know, it was the it was the Harbringer. It was it was the taste of things to come. It's really like two games. The first half of the game feels like a zombie, you know, run of the mill game. Yeah, but... and then the second half of the game because it came on two discs was like just action cranked up to 11 you have zombies firing machine guns at you like it feels really ridiculous but yeah, like you, the best you always knew ridiculous. like a boss fight was coming because you'd hear the disc start to rev up yeah exactly oh, here we got a boss fight coming something's gonna happen but yeah i don't know i just resident evil games like yeah they, they, like i said Code we Veronica have to remember was there, like, was, there was also a time when zombies weren't like the meme that they are now yeah. like they weren't done to death yeah um i remember with the resident evil games i don't i don't know which one it was because I, I don't really keep up with the franchise that much but there was one where they had like this really graphic cutscene where they they shove like that parasite thing into like the person's throat to infect them i don't know which one that was but it, it, it was traumatized four. me as a kid and i i had ptsd ever since so the only thing i've been able to get enjoyment wise out of the franchise is just whatever game uh, where they say you could become a Jill sandwich, whatever game that is about Jill mm. Valentine. That's the only aspect of Resident Evil I can get enjoyment out of because it just yeah. You have to love bad things to enjoy Resident Evil. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I just yeah, that like I said, that game just it wasn't just zombies. It was just the menus and there was so many uh, better action games at the time. I mean, that that we're just doing things better and the, like that game is still doing it the same way that it's been doing it for 20 years plus. This is boring. This is boring to me now. So it's not Aaron fun to run down a hall, right. cut scene, run down a hall, cut scene. It's like Metal Gear Solid games. That's why I don't like them. It's, I call them cut scene the game because you like it's all cut scenes and then you get to press some buttons for more cut scenes. It's really boring. Really, That's really kind of how Mortal Kombat is. Uh, I don't know if it was like that originally, <laughs> but now it is like that. It has no, it used to fight. And then, yeah, it used to fight mostly. Yeah, and then it would like lead into the fights with the cinematics. But yeah, there's a lot of cutscenes. Yeah, I think he's right with the Resident Evil Five. That's the Jill Sandwich game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. dude, Resident <laughs> Evil Five was like all of the worst parts of Resident Evil Four, but like ramped up. Uh, so like way more action. Uh, you know what? You know what does Resident Evil better than Resident Evil? Silent Hill. That does it better than Resident Evil. Those that does are, seem like a cool game, yeah. That's a great spooky game. Fun. Uh, real creepy. One and two are really good. <laughs> that's so. just really funny, though, because you said you don't like Metal Gear Solid, and those are both Kojima. So I didn't say I didn't like that, Kojima stuff. Yeah, I just so said I don't like... You like it when Kojima's madness is funneled into horror and not so much action. Yeah, like like Metal Gear, it's like, uh, you know, I, I, I played the first two when I was, was like, eh. well, the first 3D ones. There was one originally that was... Uh, I honestly can't stand to even be around Metal Gear Solid fans. Like, they try to tell me about it, and it is... Ex like, it's, it's exhausting. It's like, imagine if you're just talking to somebody casually like we're talking... And then they just start launching into like a 45 minute lecture on some storyline of something that you've never experienced. And they're, they're just talking about it like, oh, the intrigue. And it's like, I, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like you hide in uh, under a box. You have to yeah. fight, a, you fight one of the guys. You have to put the controller in the other controller. It's so dumb. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's like, a YouTuber that always brags about uh, how amazing Metal Gear Solid is. It's like one of the games where like, they're breaking the fourth wall. And uh, he, he always, like, brags about that all the yeah, time. Yeah, like, one of the boss tells you what other games you were playing, and it reads your memory card. Something and when like somebody that, told yeah. me that, I was like, oh, that's cool. It, it doesn't interest me, but that sounds interesting, you know, like... I, I mean, back know. in the day, that was that was a big deal, but, you know, it was, like, throwing everybody off. But, um, yeah, it, it just, I don't know, I still don't think the game holds up, actually. So Metal Gear it, and it Resident Evil. I don't it doesn't really games. sound that menacing, though. I don't know if it's supposed to be, but it's like, I've heard you've been playing Pikachu. It's like, okay. <laughs> hey. I said, I said, I said, I said the, oh, my God. I, I got him to say the P word. I'm sorry. I tried to say no, the name Silent of the, the, one of the popular actually, ones. Silent Hill 2 is actually really, I haven't played it, but like. It's good. The way that they were able to take the limitations of the time in terms of draw distance that they were able to look at that and go, well, why don't we just make it really foggy is such yeah. a kind of ingenious solution at the time. Yeah, so you don't have to even worry about draw distance. There's just fog everywhere. It was just like, man, whoever came up with that idea. Yeah, the it's... lore of that game is really disturbing, though. Like, obviously, it's yeah. supposed to be, but yeah. I was reading some of that. It's, it's like actually really, really messed up stuff. <laughs> all right, well, Rob, why don't you bring it home with your favorite game of all time? Well, my favorite game of all time, uh, you know, uh, that, but I'm, I'm picking one I'm playing now. But my favorite game of all time, I already mentioned it earlier, is Civilization V. Um, you know, it's uh, it's the one, I think they have six now. But um, five, I put it in somewhere. That's my favorite game. Um, it's it's a uh, PC, you know, you, you, build, you build your societies up. I've been playing Civilization since the first one. And five is probably the best. I still play it to this day. I think I got, I probably got three year, you know, close to three years play time on that game. It's it's the most played game on my Steam account. I've had it since my day one Steam account. So it's, it's, I still play it and I know how to play it in and out. I have all the expansions. I have everything. I just keep playing. See, it. we're so very different people because the most played game on my Steam account, I didn't even think about putting in my top five. Oh, okay. 
I have. Well, yeah. Wouldn't, you wanna, buy wouldn't your favorite it. game be one you play all the time? Not if it's something that is just like it, Binding of Isaac is a game that it's procedurally generated. So nothing new ever really happens, but it's like it's familiar. It's like something I can just pick up and do for a half hour and then put mm-hmm. down. I have Ark on my my top played, and it's a terrible game, so I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> include it. Like I it's mean, Skyrim, fun, but it's like broken. There. You know, Skyrim's. Uh, I played a lot of Skyrim. I play a lot of other games, but uh, like I said, World of Warcraft probably is just is it's lower playtime than Civilization Five. And then I didn't want to do the whole the whole thing. I'm just one particular civilization. Because four is really good too. I played that quite a bit. And then three, two, and one are, you know, those are old, old. But um, you know, Civilization Five, fantastic game. The new one's not so great. I don't like the changes they made. And they don't let you nuke cities as easily. But um, you know, four was cool because you can nuke a city and just wipe it off the map. Um, but it, you know, it it actually teaches you history and other things too. It's a pretty cool game. Um, I like it a lot. But uh, you know, and that's a game you just sit there and click. It just click. You relax. And you're like, I got like two or three hours to waste, and I, I just play it. There's nothing really that stressful about it. So, um, yeah, you know, and it's got tons of maps and everything else. There's a big community with it. Um, and uh, my honorable mention game I just started playing. I think everybody will like it's called Lost Ark. It just started. It just came out. If you like Diablo, it? okay. it's like a down thing. It's a Korean made game. It's Diablo. It's free. It uh, I've been playing the, the past few days. Fantastic game. A lot of fun. If you like Diablo and it's online Diablo, it's got PvP in it and everything. It's what Diablo three should have been. But boy, is it a great looking game. It's been fun so far. And uh, that's that's one I'll probably be playing for a while. I don't think I've heard of it, actually. Yeah, Lost Ark. Yeah, go check it's it out. It's pretty cool. ARC it's free. Or it sounds, it sounds good because I I want to play Diablo, but it's a free game. So, sure. yeah. Logan, what do you got for your best game of all time? I I have no idea what it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to pick uh, a game that was released just December 2021. Uh, I'm gonna pick uh, Halo Infinite. I was gonna. Pick- this shit is actually trash. There was any of them that I could have picked uh, in that franchise because they're all amazing and I'm obsessed with that universe. But I, I wanted to pick the newest one uh, because even though it is it is currently kind of broken, um, I would say it has the most potential easily out of the whole franchise. I think it could be the best game if they keep adding expansions and stuff uh, and DLC. I, I feel like from what I've played. Like the campaign that they have and stuff, I feel like it could really be the best one, uh, given time for them to fix it. It's horrible mess that it is. Three was really good, like online and stuff that changed everything. Yeah, the multiplayer mechanics are really good. So, yeah. and the, the campaign that they have is pretty good, but it's too short. But I think if they keep expanding on it, yeah. like they do with these live service games, I think it'll be one of the best ones in the whole franchise. As long as they don't put like Fortnite mechanic type stuff in it, it's... <laughs> yeah. They they might. There's probably going to be a battle rail one day. Yeah. I'm sure, with how popular that is. So, three was. Uh, I liked three's online, but it was three is great. It was too slow for me. I don't like because like well at least going back, uh, I liked it when it was out. But if you go back now, it's like shooters really spoil you with the whole sprinting thing. If you go back and play one of the old Halo games and you can't sprint, mm-hmm. you're like, this is so slow. Like what is what is with the? Well, you ran around very fast. Everybody could run. You weren't very slow, slow. Sprinting can be, eh. it depends. On an I actually had game. a traumatic uh, Halo experience. I, I had this job where my boss wanted us to play. Um, yes, that is a bit of BAM shirt. I had this boss who would, um, who just wanted to play Halo 2 all the time. And since he was my boss, he could just force me to be his friend. So like, <laughs> Five to six nights a week, I had to go over and play Halo 2 with him, play online matches like every single night. And I was just like, that was when I learned I was really horrible at FPSs because I I did this for like six months. I played Halo 2 for hours every single night because my boss made me and I never got any better. Like I was just, I was just as terrible six months in as I was the first time I picked it up. You could just, I was just suck at games. I mean... 
Don't blame, that, that, don't blame your boss. This shit is actually trash. I mean, yeah, that's. I suck at games, is what it is. I'm actually yeah. trash. I mean, you, you do platformers and stuff. Those are your favorite games. Those are easy mode compared to yeah. first person shooters. You got to have some talent and skill, right? Unless Logan? you're talking about like, unless you're talking about like, like Super Meat Boy. I think that's supposed to be like a hard platformer, right? Yeah, hey, Logan, last heard. week when Miss Marina was giving one word answers, this is like the complete other end of the spectrum. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this this episode. <laughs> Why? I, don't, I don't know if you if you watched that, but yeah, we had, I don't. I don't watch the show now. Our other guest, well, was, you actually, you actually talk a lot to us, which is nice. Oh, um, is that what I'm? I'm supposed to not be talking? No, you're. You know, you're. You're oh, the okay. best. Okay, of I can show up. Yeah. Just show my book again. That's all. Okay. The most detail that she went into was about Burger King, which was yeah. the topic on the. Which was oh, okay. Favorite. I get yeah. the Burger King. Okay. So I'm going with my favorite game of all time, and if anybody here has even heard of it, um, I'm going to be surprised. But here you go. Valiant Hearts, The Great War. Um, Looks like a happy game. Yeah. It. Um, yeah, so it's like this weird kind of puzzle game. Uh, takes place during World War I. Um, Ooh, happy. You play one of four different characters, and you kind of switch roles throughout the game. Um, but it has, like, the most depressing, horrendously sad ending I've ever seen to anything in my life, where you play as, like, this father of one of the characters, and you're on the fields in Flanders, World War II, or World War One, and... Your commanding officer is just kind of yelling at everybody, and the game makes you just keep on progressing, and it doesn't stop until you finally reach the inevitable conclusion to just whack your commanding officer on the head. Um, and then the game cuts to a final scene where you're just standing there, and you have to walk your character forward to his execution. And it's soul-crushingly depressing, um, there are videos on, they're like reaction videos of it on YouTube where people are just like, no, why do I have to do? But like, it's a very historical game and that was the reality of the time. So that was my, it was like a unbelievably emotional movie, this game. And I totally understand it's an obscure game. Not many people know about it. Um, and you can all feel free to rip me for, for my choice of best game of all time. But that's my favorite experience uh, of all time playing a video game. Sounds like you're kind of a masochist. Do you like enjoy a game where you die at the end? Well, I mean, hang on. Let me pull this up here. I mean, what are the I mean, mechanics like? Are those at least good? Or is it just you click through, it's like Depression Quest or something? It's, it's, it's more story than anything else. So if you hear people talk about like trashing walking simulators, uh, I totally get that. This is a little bit more game, but when I went to create a book, like it's the, the inspiration of it is pretty clear from seeing. Oh, I see why you picked this game. Yeah, you just wanted to hawk your book. I got it. <laughs> How dare you go on a show on a stream and promote your book? How dare you? Secretly, you this list was just top ten shills. So the <laughs> the campaign's not even open. He's cheating, though. Yeah, he's cheating. That's all it is. That's why you picked it. Well, okay. clearly that, that game inspired this book as well. Let, so let's get back to the subject at hand. Tales of Novaterra. Uh, 69 backers, 22 days left. On the first 30. Yeah. On the uh, No, dude, you can't say that. You have to go oh, 22 days left. Oh my god, we only got 22 days left. Hurry up and There's back There's only it. 22 days left, guys. You need to get on this. Um, I would really like to thank Rob, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm sorry that, sorry Logan, I'm sorry that Logan ruined the show. Um, Logan, do you have anything you'd like to close us out with? Yeah, I just wanted to correct him, and I think he said, I think he was, what he meant to say was, I'm sorry that I ruined the show, referring to himself, but thank you for being on the show. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's true. I'm sorry you ruined the show. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, we will see you next time on the... Goats and Gods Power Hour. Uh, really, really appreciate everybody for coming out. Really appreciate the chat. Hail the chat. Hail Rob. Go out and get Tales of Novaterra, and we Please. will see you next week.
Yeah, I think that that went a lot better than our, our other still one. still alive. Well, let's just Ab keep up the incompetence. Thanks.